This is Bo from legionpodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand-scale take-a-penny-leave-a-penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, hey, welcome back. Let's just get started. Welcome back to Hero Hero Go Show, the the show that dares ask the question, are you really still subscribed? Um in our continuing series, our quarterly series on the Whispering Corridors uh, series, uh, you may recall in the last episode, um, we discussed the uh, the film um, The Wishing Stairs. And we were going to talk about this movie, the one we're talking about tonight, um, but we talked so long about The Wishing Stairs that we were like, well, I guess we're just going to do a separate show. And with me to d- discuss uh, not just The Wishing Stairs, which we're going to discuss again, um, but also this movie, 2005's Voice, or as it's known in Italy, El Voce. Uh, it is <laughs> the, the master of Italian horror cinema himself, Richard Glenn Schmidt of uh, the uh, the movie Somnambulist. Uh, the, the cinema Somnambulist. Oh, shit. And... Uh, Hello, this is the bad show. <laughs> right? Oh, bad. Yeah, and then nailed it. <laughs> and then the doomed movie house. <laughs> oh my gosh! Promotional contribution, right? Cross promotion, uh... brand loyalty, synergy. <laughs> Excuse me, Bo. I don't mean to correct you, but it's <laughs> hello. This is the Doom Show. And uh, it is Doomed Movie Thon, and it's Cinema Somnambulist. Okay, I mean, uh, of course, I appreciate it is. you having me on, but get it right. Um, you're coming up on your 200th episode. Oh boy! And yes. I'm I as a listener. Look, I'm a fan. <clears throat> I've told you this before. I like I listen to every single damn episode of Hello, This Is the Doom Show. It is my uh, one of my personal favorites, where I can just relax and because your show is something I would never do. Like, I would never do the show that you do, if that makes sense. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I, I, I've i told you a million times, I love the editing on the show, which always makes me laugh. But also, I, I, I feel like I'm inexplicably learning things. Like, I have a much deeper appreciation for Barbara Boucher than anyone who's never really seen a Barbara Boucher movie should have. And but it makes me happy and and I uh, yeah I I love the show it is the best so it is always exciting to have you here. We are now the hello welcome to the overhyped as hell show. It's one of those th- things that I feel like once you listen to you, the first episode you're like what in the fuck is going on here, and then by the third episode that you listen to you're like why aren't there more of these every day. It's it it it's been a slow evolution, a mutation, if you will. It's like, hello, this is the Doom Show is as close as you will get to a Cronenbergian podcast that <laughs> somehow fuses with your brain. Long live the new flesh, I say. 
the the moment that I think changed the world, like like uh, speaking of not understanding time zones. Mm-hmm. Hello, this is me show. Uh, <laughs> when our buddy Marky Karloff called in to tell his story about getting his first boner during <laughs> Freddy's Revenge, Nightmare on Elm Street Two. That moment when he called in and rambled for like four minutes, mm-hmm. th- I don't think we'll ever be the same again. Nothing on this planet will ever be the same. If you only listen to four minutes of our show, listen to that four minutes. I really enjoy all the Elm Street stuff. Oh, um, and, and you know, was delighted when recently four through six dropped. Yes. And that has been hilarious. Even though I think the Rennie Harlan movie is garbage, I am... <laughs> I, I hate that that movie a lot, but oh, uh, yeah, I but it, it's still fun to listen to people who don't hate it as much as me. I'm scared. We're coming up on the one I can't stand, which is the new nightmare. I don't like any of them after three. Oh wow! I I'm there are some that I can kind of tolerate, like the was it Dream Child and mm-hmm. Freddy's Dead are like, eh, this is passable if you squint entertainment <laughs> and then the rest of it i think is kind of hot garbage but i i think it's because I, I like the first three so much oh yeah for wildly different reasons and and like four and on just felt like now we have a formula and we're just doing that i love that i f- there's such a huge love of new nightmare that i feel like i've been doing it wrong so i am excited to rewatch it for the upcoming, we're going to do New Nightmare, Freddy vs. Jason, and then, of course, Micro Naps, the movie, <laughs> the remake. Yeah. So I'm excited to see if, like, with a new appreciation of the whole series, maybe New Nightmare is finally going to click. You and know, I'll be like, whoa. I, I Yeah, that's a movie that people will try to gaslight you into, like, oh, no, you should go back and watch it, which I did about three years ago. <laughs> and then I watched it, and I was like, no, no, it's still incredibly boring. And, oh, man. And also, why are you asking the lovely Heather Langenkamp to do this in a movie? <laughs> Give her something else to do. Yeah, something in her wheelhouse. She needs to be in a different lane than the dual role she's playing here, and it's not. Anyway, we could go, we, look. I'll be on that show with you. Um, I'll I'll just invite Yay. myself to the the next Elm Street show. Um, yeah. But tonight we are we are finishing not finishing we are um, in the, the penultimate film in the Whispering Corridor series, which thus far I, has been fantastic. Oh yeah, Whispering Corridors the original is kind of a, a good ghost story, a very kind of traditional ghost story. Then you have Memento Mori, which has that um, houseu like third act. That is oh God. fucking amazing. Then Wishing Stairs, I think, surprised both of us. Yeah. And is tremendous. Genuinely freaky. Like, really strange, unsettling. Yes, yes. And a lot of really creepy imagery. And, yeah. there. Oh, just the, the that one shot of her floating in the dance room is so fucking good. Oh yeah. Um, so then we come to voice, which is the fourth, uh, naturally in the whispering corridor series, um, to give you the, the vital stats on, uh, this film. It is made entirely out of cheese. No, it is. <laughs> it is di- directed by, uh, Equan Choi, um, who is known for such films as life is cool and money show. And uh, he only directed five movies from 2005 to 2011, and then a short film in '94. So not not a giant body of work. Um, it uh, it stars Ok Ben Kim as Yong On, who is our uh, sort, uh, sort of our lead, our, our lead ghost. Ooh. Ooh, there are ghostly doings. And then there's uh, uh, Ji Hai So, who is uh, Jun Min. And then really the, the other big character is Cho Ah, who is the uh, the uh, sort of slightly creepy girl in the movie that we will get to in a moment. Yeah, so it's one of those movies that doesn't really have like a stacked deck 
in terms of yeah. directors and stars and stuff. Um, like uh, uh, the girls in Wishing Stairs were in all kinds of stuff, and there's definitely some like uh, uh, b- 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 so uh, so young Kim, uh, who's the teacher, uh, was in The Villainous, which is a, a pretty rad action yeah. film of past couple of years 2017 uh, is when that came out um but again not it, it's not uh, not like your your wishing stairs where it's just like well shit these people have been in everything um so uh let uh, had you seen this one before are you uh were you a completist uh i was th- i was uh, a newbie to the world of voice uh before we were going to cover it for the show i had not gotten to it yet so now i've seen it twice though yeah, I'm in the same boat where it was like, hey, I, I had this sitting on my shelf uh, and then finally got around to watching it. And uh, for for the show, uh, a lot of times, a lot of these podcasts are just a good excuse for me to do the thing that I've been meaning to do. Let's be honest. <laughs> so so we watch these and uh, and, you know, let, let's just say it up front. Uh, it, it's a bit of a, a letdown from Wishing Stairs. Sadly, yes. But kind of how could it not be? Um, wishing stairs is, 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 uh, the kind of the peak of the series, even though Memento Mori gets a lot of good press as well. It should, it's a great movie. And the first one's uh, equally, uh, not equally good. It's probably, eh, we'll talk about it later. Um, but let's get into this movie. So basically we open this movie with our, uh, our, our main character who is, uh, young on who is a, uh, a singer, she's uh, like in a in a singing class, and her friend, who is June Min, is like, "Hey, how about you stop singing and we go get some food and you stop acting like a weirdo?" And June Min also uh, is recording her, like uh, which will come into play later. But um, and it's kind of similar to the opening of Wishing Stairs, of like, "Hey, let's go to the concert. Stop dancing." And instead of going to a concert, it's just going to get something to eat or whatever. And, uh, um, but it establishes the relationship between these two girls, these two high school girls, because all these movies are about ha- high school girls that almost kiss <laughs> or almost grope in the shower. Almost. <laughs> yeah. There's Not a, quite. there's a real passionate embrace at one point in this film, but yeah. So it's, it's these two girls in, in the, um, uh, Young Un finally uh, convinces Jun Min that she isn't going to go anywhere, that she's going to keep practicing. And she says something about, like, hey, I'm going to make this perfect for you. And, and uh, it's your favorite song, and I'm going to get it right. And Jun Min's like, fine, fuck off. I'm, I'll take off. Okay, so Jun Min then is leaving. And then she sees a creepy lady in the shadows leaving the music room. And is like, huh, that seems weird. Also, some bells are chiming. This whole scene's kind of creepy. And then Young Eun feels like she's being watched in the music room. And she turns around. Nobody's there. And so uh, she gets spooked and, like, tries to find this uh, this pair of eyes watching her. But this figure constantly remains behind her, which is kind of the creepiest thing in the whole movie. <laughs> front loaded yeah it really is because there's this great scene where she's like she's running and the figure's following her and then this sheet of music starts floating through the air and young un just stops and watches it because after all it's just a sheet of paper with music except it then flies through the air and stabs her in the fucking throat which i was like whoa wait a minute i remember this this is too hot for tv when Sheet Music Kills, Volume 3. Oh, see, I've only got the first two. Oh, man. Well worth the subscription. Mm. Eh, it always is. That's how they get you. <laughs> but, yeah, so she gets stabbed in the throat by this sheet of music, falls down, and a voice is like, who are you? And, you know, credits. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, we we kick into the movie proper, proper like, and the young un wakes up and she touches her throat and it for a second she thinks maybe she just fell asleep practicing or something, 
And then she starts heading downstairs and she notices that there's a drip in the ceiling. Uh, more disturbingly, Richard, the water passes right through her to the floor. Uh, oh, which is not behavior you see out of, say, your corporeal bodies. I just said, girl, you a ghost. <laughs> like, I love the leaky ceiling proves me ghost gag. Like, <laughs> Well, and then to back it up immediately after, you have a couple of people just walking through her. <laughs> Rude. Right, and she's like, shit, I'm a ghost. This sucks. <laughs> uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. And <laughs> then we get a title card that says, the first day. So this is okay. our first day as a ghost. We need to talk about this real quick. Yes, please. I... This time, like, it feels like months are passing in this movie. And every time I think that she's been a ghost for, like, a hundred years, it's the second day. I'm like, what? Yeah. How How do time work? <laughs> yeah. Much like time zones, I don't understand. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I think it's because not much is happening in between uh... the days and it's just like will they get on with this and then finally a bunch of stuff happens at the end you're like what the fuck just happened yeah i think they could have cut the first day bullshit and just left it like who knows how long she's been a ghost does it matter it, yeah it, because it doesn't matter is the other <laughs> thing it doesn't matter like it's not like she's on a timer where someone's like well hey if you don't find your way into the light or whatever after 5 days that you're doomed to walk the, you know, halls of this school for eternity or something. It's just this arbitrary chapter division of the film. Yep. Anyway, so she's wandering around and she's like, I'm in a nightmare, a nightmare, uh, or a nachtmare if you're German. And, <laughs> and then she sees her old pal, uh, soon men coming into the school and runs to greet her. But as she's running outside, she's immediately transported back into the hallways. Which, again, not the kind of behavior you expect out of reality. Maybe you don't. <laughs> You're not allowed to go... Uh, wh what are you trapped in? What What is your limbo? My limbo is the really, really, really uh, shitty Taco Bell mm -hmm. on uh, Fowler Avenue here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't leave until I've eaten everything on the menu. Like, <laughs> like one of everything on the menu. Yes. Okay. All right. Maybe I don't. I don't know the rules to this haunting. <laughs> this talk stay in school, kids. More like even if you have to die <laughs> and get trapped there, stay in school, kids. More like taco hell. Oh yeah. That's some raw humor, Brody. You better check that with the Legion people first. <laughs> yeah. Copyright infringement on being <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> so Guilty as charged. <laughs> so, outside, after uh, Young-un gets time warped back into the building, Soon Min like, looks up like, Huh? Did I just hear a ghost scream? And it turns out the answer was yes. And so the music teacher finds Young Un's phone and sees where Soon Min was trying to call her, who we then see in class, Soon Min in class, and there's just the empty seat beside her that's like, hey, remember your friend? She's fucking dead, murdered by paper. And she's asking around, like, hey, has anybody seen Young Un? And everyone's like, no, loser. Um, which seems cruel. Ouch. Yeah. And then Young Un uh, is wandering the halls because, you know, the one upside of being a ghost is you don't have to go to class. So she finds the sheet of paper that might have killed her and then sees the music teacher in the hall and calls out to her. But again, she can't be seen or heard because she's fucking dead. Like, <laughs> Young Un, you a ghost girl. And then Sun Min goes to the office to report her missing friend because, as we'll learn, nobody else is going to do it because her mother is fucking dead, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, and because the guy says, look, it's a Memorial Day for Young Un's mother. She's probably there at the memorial. And um, 
Young Un, although, is actually in the office calling out to uh, Soon Min, who looks like she sees her at first, but then walks away. And poor Young Un is just, you know, d- disconsolate, uh, I think is the word. Because, you know, how terrible would that be to be stuck in a place with your best friend there and you can't make her see or hear you? Um, but I guess, you know, in Hollow Man style, you could see them all get naked. Oh, Hollow Man, when will you learn? Um, <laughs> he's got a hollow hog. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, I mean, Kevin Bacon, good Lord. I have seen Kevin's bacon. I know. We all have. Good Christ, that. Uh, <laughs> now, I almost want to call that movie Cruel Intentions. Wild Things is where you see that honker. That's why he was so good dancer and dirty dancing. Um, Because he's dancing on the third leg. He's dancing on the ceiling with it. (laughs) Oh, Oh. Saturday Night Fever's indeed. (laughs) Yeah, oh, what a feeling. Man, he should be fame, us. Mm, He's gonna fuck forever? (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) He's, I got the live feed queued up here. He's tantric. That would be the best 24 uh, 7 webcam of just the Kevin Bacon fuck cam. He's got billions of watchers. Meanwhile, Stings has zero or maybe <laughs> one by mistake. Ew, it's Sting. I don't want to watch him do it. Right. He's 67 and he fucks for 14 <laughs> days in a row. Who's got I can't the wait time? 69. Oh, will yeah. you still feed me? <laughs> when I'm 69 every breath you take baby so I don't even know where I was going with that last it bit. doesn't Here matter so um young Oon, uh has pocketed this sheet music somehow the ghost sheet music and uh Sun Min is being uh interviewed in her in her recording class and it's just bitching about her friend taking off without saying anything or not an interview. She's making the morning announcements. And she says uh, she hasn't been listening to music and her voice has gone all weird and she's been hearing things all morning. It's really quite a something. And meanwhile, in the recording booth, uh, Young Un is is pleading with Soon Min. Um, and Soon Min starts to hear something but thinks she's going crazy. Yes. Which is kind of the an interesting part of the movie that doesn't last nearly long enough for my money. Yeah, where it's like I totally agree. It's it's like I got to deal with. Hey, am I going? It, is the sudden disappearance of my friend creating this phantom that I'm seeing? Yeah, I wanted more of that freak out in this in the audio booth there. In the that was just so fun. I'm like, ah, keep going, just start trashing the place. Yeah, and instead we see like the music teacher kind of looking at her all creepy, like she's up to no good. And then the soon men finally just gets taken to the nurse's office where they're like, you need a rest because you're acting kooky. And sure enough, young Un is there and keeps up with the yip yap. Um, we get a look at the teacher removing her scarf, which she's been wearing for the whole movie to show that she's got this hideous scar on her neck, which again, that'll kind of matter in a little bit. And then we cut back to young Un in the uh, nurse's office and she's apologizing to soon men for basically freaking her out. But she's like, well, you're the only person who can hear me. And I think maybe I'm being punished for not leaving when you asked me to go. And while she's explaining her predicament, um, young Un starts singing, um, and which gives soon men, the creeps because it's her favorite song. And Su Min says, I can't open my eyes because what if young Un is not there? You know, like she dearly wants her friend to be back. Um, at first, at first, <laughs> cause we're going to get into that. So, and then, uh, we cut away to the creepy teacher snapping a CD in half and blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, Soon Min and Young Un are now like acknowledging that Young Un is dead, and this is where, like, again, in um, one scene, we have gone from complete freak out to Nancy Drew and the ghostly singer. Yeah, 
Another thing they front load here, which is really strange for this movie, is they front load all this emotional like stuff. Like it, it's really powerful. It's really heartbreaking immediately, and we're like half an hour in, and I'm like, whoa! So the movie has given us its biggest scare, and now it's given us it's like one of its biggest emotional punches. Although it'll be misleading, it'll be a twisty turny. But it's still like, what is this movie doing? Right. And once it starts making the turns, which it'll do in pretty short order, I think that's when I kind of stop caring. Mm. And anyway, but but this part is kind of fun where even though I, I do think we get here a little too fast, but I do like this idea of like, oh, here's this tragic ghostly friend. Who's like, I need you to help me figure out why I was killed. Yeah. And uh, we also get the rules that she can't leave the building. Um, they go into the basement where they can kind of talk freely so that soon men doesn't look crazy talking to the air. Yep. The, the go down air to the boiler like, room. <laughs> yeah. No, no Krugers down there. Right. Yeah. They uh, find finger knives and... <laughs> <laughs> slightly tattered green and red sweater. Mm-hmm. Uh, so soon men is like, Hey, did you see uh, the face of the, the woman um, who I saw in the hallway? Because I saw somebody leaving and uh, she's like, I'm pretty sure it was the music teacher. And young Un is like, no, no, no. She was too nice to me for that to be the killer. And then, a maintenance guy comes down the steps to interrupt looking for a leak, not to take Taking, a leak. Okay. Gotcha. I, yeah. I saw where you were going with that. <laughs> he wanted to see if it dripped through his body too. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I got a yeah. drip for you. <laughs> Am ever, I a ghost? Ever since I got back from Reno, I've had the drips. <laughs> I can confirm that, dude. <laughs> so, um, then we cut to our music teacher who is doing an experiment with the class where she tells everyone to sing a note that she played and it sounds like a fucking awful chaos. And then we see this creepy girl, uh, from the opening of the movie who it turns out is Choa, um, looking at Sun Min and then it looks like she can see Young Un as well, which would be a big surprise because, in theory, Su Min is the only person who can see her or hear. And then the teacher singles out a few girls and is like, "You, you, 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 stand up now, sing the same note again." And when they do, it's this like beautiful harmony. And she says, "Look, if these notes don't go together, it's just noise. It's like human relationships." That there is this, uh, there there is this perfect pitch if it's just right, and there's this kind of soft golden light to everything in this scene, and it's kind of kind of beautiful. And then we have this montage of sounds. There's uh, people snoring. There's uh, the tapping of chalk and pencils, and a, a girl is singing, and you know it, it's. Just the the movie kind of indulging in that the sort of sensory play of of um it, like there are moments where the movie will drop out all sound entirely so you can kind of hear Young Un's pers- perspective where it's just this flat nothing. This is why I muted the movie and just listened to Lawrence Welk records the whole time. I... To add that to add that nuance. Sure. Sure. Um, I think if you play his greatest hits of PBS, it actually syncs up Dark Side of the Moon style. <laughs> so it's like the, uh, hey, 20 record set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Listen to that tuba sound. Funny, true fact uh-huh. about Lawrence Welk. He got worse at speaking English the older he got. So... Early episodes in the 50s and 60s, perfectly understandable. By the time you get to the 80s, it's like he's just speaking German now. It's great. Huh. I'll have to go back and watch some of those, which I won't do. And then... I 
I'll do it just to be safe. <laughs> you probably should. Let me know the good ones. You really? Okay, you, they're, well, they're all good. Come on, dude. It's I, like the Whispering Corridors movies, brother. I want the uh, that like the best of Lawrence Welk in forty hours. That like next generation list, where it's like <laughs> this is this is what you need to understand the core Lawrence Welk experience. Yep. Yep. Those SCTV, I mean, SCTV, I wish. The SNL bits, they get it wrong. They almost get it, but they get it wrong. Are you talking about the so, ones with, uh, um, is it Catherine Wig and the small hands? Yeah, they're so close. Yeah. I, I like those bits, but I mean, Lawrence Welk is infinitely stupider and funnier <laughs> in real life than any bit could ever do. <laughs> oh boy, it's a one man band. <laughs> it, I. Look, I have very fond memories of Lawrence Welk, and all of those memories are light blue. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, Soon Min and uh, and and Young Un. Yes, Young Un. Um, so they, uh, so Sun Min and uh, and Young Un go back to the boiler room where there are noises all the time, and um, this it turns out is this flashback where Young Un is talking about how she's formed this relationship with this teacher. And Sun Min is saying, you know what I heard about the music teacher? She's a lesbian. And that she had larynx cancer, and she can talk, but she can't ever sing again. And then uh, we cut back to the present where it's Young Un, just kind of in the classroom, um, where then she just leaves sadly, because again, she's fucking dead. So Sun Min then goes to the music teacher after class and asks her about Young Un, and the teacher's all cagey about it. He's like, yeah, I know her, but I mean, I don't know her, know her. I mean, she's in my <laughs> class. Have we gotten to the, do we have the rapping girls showed up yet? We got the rapping. Yeah. So they're, they're classmates. I, I didn't make a ton of notes about them because they don't really do anything other than no. give her a hard time, give like soon men a hard time. Yep. Let's, we'll get to them in just a second. Because okay. Soon Min then goes looking for Young Un and finds the creepy girl, aka Choa, in the recording booth, in this like announcer's booth, where she says, I heard there were voices here. And Soon Min is like, Voices? Are you saying you hear voices? And when she asks if she hears them, the creepy girl says, It's a time for dogs or wolves. At night you can't tell. What is true is hidden at this time. And it's like, What the fuck are you talking about, Choa? <laughs> she yeah she's a she immediately is like oh you are the like the uh, winona writer from beetlejuice of this movie and she just doesn't have the wardrobe options in this school to be the goth girl that she truly is inside yeah right that would be amazing i know Young Un is then watching the school empty out at the end of the day, and and then we see some golden particle after effects, uh, <laughs> some of which are some kids running in a field, and then she steps into the after effects, and then she's at a hospital where she sees herself talking to her sick mother, and then has this like flashback uh, of leaning her head on the teacher's shoulder and saying, you smell like my mom. Which is sexy? I think it's, wait, do I smell like your mom smelled when she was alive? Or do I smell like your mom now that she's dead? Because that's offensive. Right. Do I smell like cancer mom? <laughs> or do I smell like, hey, I'm making your favorite dinner for your birthday mom? I was thinking medical waste mom. Ew, that's not a great mom. Well, I mean, she does her best, but it smells so tart. Uh, uh, so let's get to some violence. Um, the music teacher is playing the cello uh, all by her lonesome in uh, in the music room um, over in another classroom. Soon men in the class are, can hear it. And young Un is like, look, I'm kind of freaked out. I don't know what this teacher's up to. Shit is getting getting real around here. Soon men. And so she writes a note to Young Un saying, look, I'm going to tell my mom I'm sleeping at your place tonight. 
And, you know, because sometimes you can't say that out loud to a ghost because you look crazy. So you just slip them a note like you do. (laughs) (laughs) And so later that night, Soon Min and her pals are kind of spying on Cho Ah. And um, these friends of hers are like, hey, these are her rapping friends. And they're like, hey, Soon Min. The, this crazy chick Choa, you know why we don't see her very much? Uh, she went all cuckoo and had to miss a bunch of school. And they're like, she's crazy. And and somebody worthy of our derision because she's different than us. And here's a rap about it. <laughs> yo, yo, all right. <laughs> Get the Jay-Z remix going. The, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come with me again. Um <laughs> It's one of my favorite, speaking of SNL sketches. <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> so we have another night of Young Un just kind of wandering the hallways. And here's a, this chorus of sounds and the hallway's kind of warping again. So she freaks out and takes off running to the basement and starts hearing uh, the, this tapping sound, which spooks her. And so she starts singing as sort of a, like a self-defense kind of thing. And then, uh, we see a woman's legs coming toward her and she looks up and it's like, huh? And then it, Sun Min rushes in and Young Un is like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're here because I think something just happened to the music teacher. And Sun Min and Young Un go to investigate where they hear this cello playing, but there's no music teacher in the classroom. And to further thicken the plot, they find Young Un's phone there too. And Sun Min, in full detective mode, is like, you know what? I think this might be a clue. I think there's something wrong with this music teacher. And so Sun Min turns off the stereo playing this cello music and then sees blood under her shoe. And then we see Young Un. Uh, her perspective where she sees this silhouette in the curtain and Sun Min then finds the music teacher hung up in an adjoining room, like all, uh, like kind of strung up by the cello, uh, uh, strings, which is creepy. Oh yeah. And it kind of reminded me again, it reminded me of, uh, of wishing stairs when you have that moment in the, in the dance room. And it was like, oh, wow, is this where the movie is going to just fucking go bananas now? The answer is yes. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah, it just, so we see that, and then we have, like, Young Un watching from within the school as police are taking soon men away along with this body. And then we get another, you know, the second day title card. (laughs) And so... Soon Min is going through Young Un's phone in back in school, and some uh, some of the classmates, some of the rapping classmates, are like, "I wonder why the music teacher killed herself." And they're like, "You know, Young Un's not here either. I bet they were fucking, and they got found out, and they just both killed themselves." And Soon Min, who is absorbing all this, and is like, "That's my friend you're talking about." Only she doesn't say it out loud. She just gets up, storms to the roof. To scream and have a smoke, both of which I totally understand. Yeah, she's keeping it pretty cool for now. <laughs> right. Well, it's the cigarette that makes it cool. Oh, yeah, cool. And then Cho. K O O L. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm Salem. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> give, give up. Um, they're in Marlboro Country on the roof. It's parliamentary? That's better. I don't know. Uh, anyway. She and her friend Winston. No. Um, but don't... <laughs> she, so Choa is up there on the roof as well. And then uh, Choa is like, so your friend Young Un, she's fucking dead, right? And, <laughs> and Simba is like, what? No, how could you think that? And she's like, wait a second. Did you hear her voice too? And Choa says, oh, I've been hearing the voices of the dead since I was a kid. But I keep my mouth shut because this isn't my business. Also, I don't know if you heard, but they sent me to a giggle factory when I told them that I could hear dead people. Which, by the way, giggle factory, my favorite (laughs) euphemism 
for a mental institution. <laughs> the Ha Ha Hut. The Ha Ha Hut is good. The Looney Bin is still pretty good. Looney yeah. Bin is a good one. But, mm. I mean, it's no... Giggle Factory just makes me laugh. That sounds like a very happy place. Taco Hell. Oh. If only that's where they go. With extra crazy sauce. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> it's wacky. Uh huh. It's non sequiturs, uh, or <laughs> I don't know, or sequiturs, mostly sequiturs. So Young Un is in the room where the music teacher hung herself, and then she has this flashback of her like working with the teacher at the piano and singing, and this you know m- like nice moment between them that also might may be loaded with romantic possibility, and. <laughs> Because all these movies are vaguely about lesbians. This movie just has the decency to be like, I heard she was a lesbian. Yeah. But there's kind of that recurring theme, too, of like, she was a lesbian, therefore she had to destroy herself. Which is pretty rampant in a lot of these movies. That just ain't right, man. No. All right. I'm glad you're with me on that. That was a real litmus test. We're going to have to pull the plug. (laughs) We can can keep recording? Okay. Good. All right. So, um... Sun Min and uh, Young Un are listening to this CD of the cello, and Young Un is like, you know, I like that song, and uh, I really like the singing on, in this song too. And Sun Min is like, wait a second, what fucking singing? And then that's when they realize there is another ghost afoot. Is it the ghost of the teacher? Is it another ghost entirely? Who knows, Richard? It, I know that it's confusing as shit when we do find out. Yeah, it kind it kind of is. I have a theory about it that I think is right, but we'll get to it. So Sun Min then asks Choa to talk in the library, and she's like, "Hey, did you ever hear a ghost before Young Un disappeared? Because we think there's another ghost afoot." And Choa is like, "I did, but I don't know whose voice it was." And hey, by the way, are you curious why you can hear Young Un? And Young Un or uh, Sun Min is like. No. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's important to the plot. It's because of your connection. And that if you forget Young Un, then uh, Young Un won't have a voice anymore at all. Like, if you ignore her, she'll go away. And for good. Which is, good lord. I mean, if you could do that with some co-workers, are you kidding me? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Like... You've just become Ed uh, McMahon now. Yes. I, well, I just, I don't want to launch into like stories of like IT people I work with, like getting them to stop, to stop. Yeah. I, I'm with you, man. Make it all, look, stop the world. I want to get off. They say. Yes. Or I'll stay on. You get off. Whatever. <laughs> as long as we're separate, but equal. <laughs> So Young Un is water in the hallways again, and she sees this mysterious figure in the distance. So Young Un chases after this ghost and up the stairs to this, you know, the After Effects world in the hallway. And then Young Un steps inside that. And then she's in uh, a classroom of young girls, and it's it's soon men volunteering Young Un to be the voice for the teacher. You know, that uh, because this teacher can't sing anymore, she needs somebody to kind of be her surrogate and and soon men has volunteered young in young un for this and and she's very good and then as she's watching this young un sees this mysterious girl the mysterious ghost girl by the window and then this mirage the whole mirage disappears and then later she is she says a young un is kind of giving her findings to Sun Min. And she's like, you know, this girl's been around for some time. And maybe uh, Young Un had done something to piss her off. But Sun Min is like, I don't know. And then she record, uh, she recorded Young Un, you know, the uh, Young Un singing at the beginning. So she's going to play this broadcast for the school as a gift. You know, it's sort of her memorial to her now dead friend. Yeah. And meanwhile, Young Un is wondering, like, hey, I wonder if my mom became a ghost like me. And she uh, mentions this picture. Uh, she was like, hey, do you remember this picture that I had in my house? And some man was like, you never invited me to your house. Are you crazy? 
And Young Eun then hears some more voices that Sun Min does not. Uh, this kind of humming and singing sound. Young Eun goes to investigate, and Soon Min then follows. But she's starting to get a little bit uh, like trepidatious. Is that the right yeah. word about this yeah, whole she, dead business? She seems to be. She starts to get quieter and quieter and more reticent to speak to her because I want to say she's almost like hold on, there's an end to this? If I just stop talking to her, she'll go away? Shit, dog, that sounds like a great idea. Right, and she's having this growing either realization or just this growing sensation that, like, this is just this crazy mystery that ultimately doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything. Yeah. You know, young Eun is dead. Whether or not the, the music, music teacher had something to do with that kind of doesn't matter because she's dead, too. And whoever this other ghost is, if Choa's right, we just start ignoring everybody and all this shit goes away. Which is the motto of the screenwriters of this movie, too. <laughs> if, we, if we just put our fingers in our ears. <laughs> It'll go away. Yes. So, <laughs> they get in, in an elevator, uh, that the same elevator that at the beginning of the mu- movie Young Eun was getting into before uh, she got you know, stabbed in the throat with newspaper or just regular paper, music paper, parchment paper, perhaps butcher paper. It's hard to say. Flash paper. (laughs) Probably flash paper, which is the perfect crime because then it goes up in a puff of smoke. The murder weapon is gone. It's like uh, what you do is uh, you freeze the the, uh, music paper and then you cook it. And then when the cops come to investigate, you serve the music paper to them. <laughs> it's just like the Black Christmas remake where he made cookies out of his mom. Uh-huh. Just I like it. I didn't see that, but now I want to. Seriously? Yeah. I know, Look, when I hear, hey, it's a Black Christmas remake, that does not scream, you need to see this. Dude, you're two behind now. I right. haven't seen either of them. I've seen the original Black Christmas, which I like quite a bit. Oh, but I'm saying there's two remakes now. <laughs> oh, shit. I am too behind. <laughs> you are so behind, brother. I know what I'm doing this decade. Never. <laughs> I'll get it in sometime before 2030. All right. That is the deal. That is the bow promise. In the ne- <laughs> next decade, I will watch the two Black Christmas sequels. Man, I like it. Yeah, it's realistic is what I like. Um, so they're in the elevator and soon then is like, this is fucked up. I am sick of being terrified and in the dark in this school and young Eun isn't saying anything. So Sun Min is like, are you even here? And, uh, then young Eun is like, I, I hear something like a human voice, but I'm not sure. And then these elevator doors open up and it's just darkness. And then we zoom back from this open door into just a void where we hear screams and laughter. And then there's this red silhouette. And this is actually legitimately a good scene where there's this red silhouette coming close and young Eun can see. And she's like, it's coming closer. Somebody's coming. Young Eun is screaming. So men is screaming. Some men finally just passes the fuck out and the doors close. And then we cut from that exciting scene to just the basement again, where soon men is just half passed out. And young young Eun is like, you know what? I think this is probably all my fault. And <sighs> yeah, no shit. So, and then so she asks Sun Min, this is where it gets real creepy, like as a relationship, where uh, sh- she's like, hey, Sun Min, I need you to stay here because without you, I'll disappear. You can't do that to me. All right? Don't fuck with me. You understand what I'm saying to you, Sun Min? And Sun Min is like kind of pretending to still be asleep. She's awake, but she's not saying anything. That's a really toxic relationship. I'm just going to go out on a limb (laughs) and say if someone's very existence depends on your listening to them and responding to them, that's a codependency you don't need in your life. Yeah, you should ghost them. Oh, (laughs) zing. Because this movie has ghosts. Babu. None of them are named Babu. Not yet. Oh. Oh, can we change it? Is this like cats? Can we drop in a digital Babu? (laughs) Done and done, my friend. Well, Judy Dench's hands will now become Babu's. Uh, (laughs) But it's the third day, Richard. Fuck. (laughs) Feels like the 50th 
thousandth day. Come Fuck. on. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite reactions ever. Just a good old fashioned Fuck. <laughs> so Sun Min is sitting alone by herself and Cho Ai comes over there. She's like, hey, how you doing? And Sun Min is like, I thought you said this was none of your business. And Cho was like, you know what? Checkmate. But let me ask you this. <laughs> if Young Eun is dead, where is her body? And Sun Min is like, you know what? Maybe she's not really dead. Maybe she's just, I don't know, kind of half dead or something. And she says, you know, Young Eun last remembers passing out in the elevator. And this is where Cho Ha lets the audience know we've got an unreliable narrator on our hands. Because yes. she says, look, you got to be careful because a ghost only remembers what it wants to. And Sun Min is like, oh, yeah, because she, I, I, I've seen this in action because she talked about me visiting her house. And I was like, you never invite me to your house, bitch. And <laughs> or something. <laughs> Then when Sun Min goes back to class, the rapping girls are sort of kind of verifying their own gossip about Young Eun and the teacher committing suicide because they were lovers and word got out. And then we have a moment between Young Eun and uh, Sun Min where Young Eun is like, hey, I I've seen you talking to this girl, Cho Ah. Um, how about you cut that shit out? I don't really like her very much. Oh, boy. She's getting a little controlling here, Richard. Oh, boy. There's just a, a, a little smattering, a sousant of Ike Turner here. <laughs> well, the thing is, she's so smart. Like, she's so good at this manipulation thing. It's not, like, like obvious what she's doing. It's real sneaky. Yeah, right. It's just like, a, hey, you know, you just <laughs> um, look, I'm not I'm not saying she's a bad person. I just want you to be careful soon, man. Just be careful with her. Just OK. Yeah. I'm worried about you. Stay away from Wednesday Adams over there. Yeah. And then a classmate comes out of the bathroom and is like, are you talking to yourself soon, man? And she's like, shut up. <laughs> no, I'm talking to you, person who's clearly pooping. <laughs> yeah. You've just had your hand in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> How about you stop <laughs> judging me and start pointing your poopy finger back at yourself? I, mean, I like how they get like issued rolls of toilet paper because the girl has brought her own toilet paper. And she's leaving with it, or she's just stealing the <laughs> toilet paper. I'm sorry. No, oh, I, I love that. Like she's just, she's just thrifty. <laughs> well, well, well. She likes the good stuff. She brings the good stuff from home. <laughs> right. <laughs> can't be using this rambo toilet paper you know why they call it that don't you the soon men because <laughs> it's rough and it's tough and it's not worth stealing <laughs> oh my god i got some cartoon bears on my shit oh, no <laughs> i hate those bears so much <laughs> Oh. I like the fact that these these cartoon bears are just like, so little bear, how did you shit? Was it swampy? Did you get it all cleaned up? Let me see the dandruff <laughs> on your bum. Yeah. Did you have to flush twice in the woods? Oh, uh, Lord. Anyway, so in the hallway, Young Eun uh, hears some guys talk about how she was a lesbian. And she's like, wait a second. Um, and she follows them into the elevator to hear them talking about another famous lesbian in the school who went missing, uh, a girl named Hyo Jung, who apparently also committed suicide. And then something hits the top of the elevator, and unsurprisingly, we now discover the body of Young Eun, uh, which is found with not a, a slip of music paper. Uh, stuck in her throat, but a metal grate, a giant metal grate stuck right in her neck. Yeah, I I mean, the whole reveal of this is so weird and backwards and like not at all simple or like, I mean, it's neat. It's a neat scene, but it's so weird. Like what? What? Well, it feels like what they're trying to communicate, uh, in addition to, you know, hey, we discovered her body finally, so we can put these theories to rest. Like, this whole thing where Sun Min is like, maybe she's not dead. It's like, are you fucking crazy? Of course she's dead. People walk through her, and you're the only person who can hear her. So, she's fucking dead. But, but in addition to that, 
it feels like there should be this moment where she realizes for herself, like, there is my body, I am dead. And and it doesn't ever really land like that. She gets faint. Like, she's like, oh, my throat hurts. Oh, I can't breathe. So instead of... Yeah, she runs off to the basement and she's just like, oh, look at my neck. Oh, I die. Oh yeah. Just, uh, anyway. I have no sympathy at all anymore for this character, but uh, it turns out that's probably by design. Yes. Uh, so Sun Min is yapping with Wednesday Adams up on the roof, and she's like, you know what? You were right. I'm starting to feel a little weird around Young Un, what with her being dead and all, and I feel like we need to like put an end to this. So let's go visit her house finally, uh, which they do. So we have Sun Min and Cho Ad now are investigators trying to get to the bottom of this. And it's really just to dispel young Un at this point. And while they're at the house, Sun Min thinks she sees young Un there, but it's just show. And then Sun Min finds a bunch of pictures with the face of a woman burned out. And it turns out that th- that woman uh, is her mother. All the, the pictures of her mom face burned right out of them. So young Un is singing by herself in the basement. She hears something uh, in the basement and goes to investigate. And then suddenly she's in the music room where we get a flashback with uh, who is presumably Hyo Jung, where this girl is pleading with young Un to stop hanging out with the music teacher. And Hyo Jung is like, look, this teacher is all I got. And young Un very coldly says, so why should I care? And then, uh, so we're like, wait a second, is Young Un not great? Oh boy. Is she not the perfect angel we've been led to believe, the victim of this film? Yeah, I, I like this reveal. I like how in, in all these movies, we're always seeing things from the haunty and not the haunter's perspective. Well, in so it's worth pointing out that this girl is uh, Akbin Kim is really the standout of this movie. She does a great turn and she is, uh, look, I'm going to just eat my words here. She is really the, the big breakout of this movie because yeah. not only was she the titular villainess, she was Taiju in thirst, which is a fucking great movie. Yes. Nice. And, and she is, uh, she is great in that. She also, does a great job of playing a real dark character in that film. So, well done. Ak Ben Kim, uh, quite the star, if you ask me. Sun Min and Choa are outside chit-chatting, and Sun Min is like, you know, I really became friends with Young Un after her mom committed suicide, because uh, her mom was really sick, and then her mother, rather than burden the family, just took her own life. And it's really sad, but what I, uh, and, and Cho, I was like, so she, you pitied her and that's what created the relationship. Ouch. Ouch. That hurts. But she's like, that really wasn't the case. It was more that I admired how she handled it. And Cho, I was like, look, soon, man, that ghost is holding you back. She was your friend once upon a time. That is true. She is not anymore. You need to let her go so she can rest in peace and so that you can finally be at peace. And then, Richard, it is the fourth day. Yay! We get uh, this teacher telling the class, uh, like, hey, I like this thing because it's like kind of a nice cultural thing where it's like, hey, I'm going to teach all you stupid kids the keys to happiness. And it's all the trappings of like being a good citizen. It's like have good credit was one. Yes. Work hard. It's that kind of stuff where it's this very specific <laughs> ethic. It's pretty great. It's one of my favorite things in the whole movie is hearing this teacher be like, all right, listen to your parents. Get home on time. Penny saved is a penny earned. He feels like a character from the very first movie. Like he yeah. feels like just one of the like the uh, asshole male teachers from the very first film that would be beating everybody with rulers and shit. Oh, yeah, that would... Uh. Those were the good old days. Back in the days when you just beat the shit out of a child with a hunk of wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or another child. Sure. Sure. You pick up the kindergartners, you you hit the third graders with the kindergartners, it's two for one. <laughs> or vice versa. Who cares? Yeah. I mean, if you got the core strength for it, go after it. You know I do, buddy. I know you do. 
Um, I'm not. I'm not recommending that for everyone. Like, start with kindergartners. Work up <laughs> to the third grade. You know, start with babies. <laughs> right. Hitting somebody with an infant is like stretching. That's like a warm up. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> yeah. If the baby's name is Bernie. Oh, bless his heart. Yeah. He looks like a little old Jewish man. Fucking socialist. Yeah. <laughs> The 1% of the third grade are going to get hit by the 2% of kindergarten. <laughs> There's a 100% chance I'm going to load my diaper. Now I understand politics. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm good at explaining things. I almost became a teacher. And then it turned out I didn't know anything. Well, don't say that on the show. That's one of the things I didn't learn. Edit. <laughs> so, Soon Min is listening to this lesson and Young Un is like, Soon Min, hey, hey. Hey, Soon Min. And, and Young Un is getting iced. Like, Soon Min is just nothing. There is nothing on her face. And then Cho Ah shows up and is like, hey, um, I got you this CD. And Soon Min then takes this CD to the recording or the, the announcing booth and has it played while Soon Min reads the announcements. And it is Young Un singing over the announcement she's making and she says young un left yesterday she she finally passed on this is the song she sang and i will always miss her so she plays it's a kind of a nice moment she leaves the announcing booth and soon <laughs> and young un is like hey soon men soon men hey hey <laughs> and soon just doesn't answer again and and young un is just like i need i need to know how i died i cannot go on if I don't know how and why I died. And then so Soon Min is like, fuck it, let's get done with this and goes to get the file on Hyo Jung from this administrator who shows her a video of the teacher conducting another music class and Hyo Jung is singing kind of in place of um Young Un. Like Basically, Young Un was the the uh, the heir apparent to Hyo Jung, who was emotionally devastated when she found herself being replaced in this teacher's life. And there were these rumors about uh, Hyo Jung and the music teacher even then. And Hyo Jung, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, was found dead in the elevator. So Young Un is then talking to Soon Min in the basement, who is like, "All right, let's let's finish this murder mystery and we're done." And Young Un is it says, look, the teacher must have used both of us, me and Hyo Jung, and then the teacher killed herself out of guilt. And so Min is like, so what? None of this matters. It can't bring her back. It can't bring you back. You need to leave. And Young Un is like, is that what you want? Do you just want me to go? And she's like, I'm losing my voice. I'm scared of what happens next. And so Min is just like, you know what? Goodbye. I got to go. And leaves her alone in the basement. And we see that Cho Ah has noticed that Soon Min is is out or is not in class. And so she now goes looking for her too. And Cho Ah is starting to hear voices in the hallway. And that's where Soon Min runs into her. And the power goes out. Lights go red. We are off to the finale, Richard. Yes, panic time. The whole school goes crazy. Yeah, like they well because they the power's out, but they they hear like singing and stuff, and somebody's yeah. like, "Is that Young Un's voice?" And everybody's like, "No, nah, she's dead. She's d -d -d dead." And then everybody oh. freaks out. Oh man, I love it when the Whispering Corridors movies have the panic moment when everyone just quickly evacuates the school and no order. No, no, like preparation. Let's just tear the fuck out of here as quickly as possible while we're all screaming at the top of our lungs. But, but the problem I have with it in comparison to the other movies is it feels so like small scale because it kind of <laughs> happens after class or after school. So it's just like girls hanging out in extracurricular clubs. And, and when they run out, it's, it's like 30 girls. It's not the giant ghost face looking down from the heavens of memento mori or you know the fucking clay murder of uh wishing stairs it just it, it feels like it feels like we've seen this all before done better in this series Bo wants more girls 
I want more ladies. Yeah. And I want them screaming. Young um, women. <laughs> to to hear the screaming of the women. <laughs> to hear them driven from the the Korean schools. <laughs> that is what is best in life. Um, Eating is not cheating. <laughs> <laughs> what is the secret of steel, Conan? If there's glass on the field. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the teenager now. <laughs> oh, my lord. <laughs> so, uh, panic has ensued. Soon Min almost falls in into the open elevator shaft, but cho saves her. And meanwhile, all over the school, the voice of Young Un is heard telling Hyo Jung to leave everybody alone, and that it's her that she wants. It's like I'm, I'm the one you want, Hyo Jung. Young Un uh, tries to help, but Sun Moon just ignores her or doesn't hear one or the other. It's just like we got to get out of here. And then we see this mysterious figure at the end of the hall, who is presumably Hyo Jung. Also, we get. Uh, another flashback here because we're we're finishing everything and it is a flashback of young un telling her mother that she needs to go like you're sick and you're we're really piling up some bills it's about time you do the familial duty and you need to leave and by leave i mean out that window at velocity and <laughs> <laughs> So uh, then we're back in the school, and then Hyo Jung is like, that's right, you killed your mother. You've been hearing my voice all along, and you ignored it, so I would disappear. She's like, so uh, you asked the teacher to sing, and when she does, uh, th- again, this is kind of a flashback where um, uh, y- Young Eun is sort of kind of seducing the music teacher, where she's like, you, you, know, you smell like my mother. And it's just kind of vaguely creepy. Then after Hyo Jung died, Young Eun called the music teacher on the phone and told her it was her fault that she and Hyo Jung were dead. So she was using her ghost powers to make the music teacher feel guilty. And then she was the one, Young Eun was the one, who strung the music teacher up with all the cello uh, strings, which we see in this scene. We, ju- we discovered her earlier in the movie, but it would have been cool if we had seen it happen, quite frankly. Yeah, um, I agree. But we see it here, and it is kind of cool. And Hyo Jung comes after her, uh, after Young Eun, and but she just goes right through her. And then Hyo Jung is like, you know what? Doesn't matter, because as soon as Soon Min forgets you, you're going to disappear too. So we have the plot laid bare before us now, which is that Young Eun is now, she is responsible for the death of the music teacher and Hyo Jung. And she is kind of the secret villain of the movie. Yeah, because when she died, there became two of her, the evil one and the one who doesn't remember shit. I I think it's more like this is the the voice of her direct memory that like this is what she's been hiding or repressing maybe yeah eh. hmm and so this is the final day Richard the final day hey. and Sun Moon is telling Cho Ah like hey, I haven't heard Young Eun's voice all day long. In the cafeteria, Young Eun watches uh, Soon Min and Wednesday Adams chit chatting, and all the voices just kind of disappear as she watches. Then we see a guy removing Young Eun's desk, and basically we're erasing all traces of Young Eun. As they're moving the desk, this Walkman falls out of it, and Sun Min nabs it, and she plays this recording of Young Eun singing, and she weeps for her friend. And she runs through the hall and we get some flashbacks of all these good times. And then she calls out for Young Eun. And as a bulb blinks above her all parasite style, she apologizes and she's like, I won't forget you. I'm sorry. I, if I, if I forced you away, that wasn't what I meant. I'm, I apologize. I want you back. But she still can't hear her. And then Young Eun tells the other Young Eun, I want my voice back. And Young Eun says, no, 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 no. That's not what you want. 
What you really want is to be alive again. So, all right, bear with okay. us. Okay. So Choa then oh. goes to, to find Sun Min again and goes down to the basement. And while she's looking around for Sun Min, the bulb explodes in the basement and sends a bunch of glass into her face. And then she just kind of staggers back and falls backwards onto another piece of glass that stabs her in the back of the head and kills her. Oh my God. Those fricking serious Korean light bulbs, man, just will wipe you out. Now, I don't know if this death shocked me or made me just really sad because I loved this character so much. Like I was like, no, yeah, and it seems kind of unceremonious in a way too. It's like it, it needed to be. It's kind of gory, but yeah. it, it I don't feel like it meant anything other than yeah. she's dead. Anyway, it was just one of those things where I'm like, eh. I just I wish this were slightly better than it is. Yeah, it's like we only had four characters the whole movie, or five characters, and so we've killed all these other ones. So I guess we need one more death scene. Let's arbitrarily pick this character that's probably a lot of people's favorites and we'll kill them doesn't matter yeah yeah and you know we don't have this giant body count anyway yeah so uh, why not let's do it up (laughs) um anyway so uh sun men finally makes her way down the basement she sees choa dead on the ground and then we the camera rushes at her she screams and then we cut to our last title card, uh, which says a month later. And it's Sun Men being returned to school where they're like, oh, I heard you were in a nursing home, question mark, where you were recovering from being crazy from seeing this girl murdered. And anyway, so she then goes uh, into the locker room, presumably to change or get books or something. And sees herself in the mirror, and she, it turns out, is possessed by Young Un. That when the camera rushed at her, that's what happened. She got possessed by Young Un, who, as the evil Young Un said, didn't want her voice back. She wanted to live. So she is now living through Sun Men. And then we see one of the best parts of this movie is the very, very ending. Yeah. Which is after we see the now possessed Sun Men, we see Choa as a ghost shouting silently. Yep. Being unheard. And there endeth voice. With a super stylish, super great ending that makes you go, why wasn't this movie better? Yeah, I I think the problem is it's about an hour fifty. Hour 45, hour 50. Oh, brother. Right, which isn't nothing. Day 18. I wish more had happened. Like the, A lot of stuff happens, but it just never feels as cool as it should. Yeah. You know? Again, it's coming off the dizzying highs of the wishing stairs, or just wishing stairs, where the, the last 20 minutes of that movie are just fucking bananas. And it's just murders and death and craziness. And even Memento Mori is that way. Whispering Quarters to an extent, but that's a little more subdued, you know. But yeah, this this just feels like it's hitting all the right beats. But for a movie about singing, it's not really about singing. And the, the theme of like losing your voice just never feels completely solid in the movie. Yeah. It... You know, it's not terrible. There's some good stuff in it. I just, of the series, it's just kind of the weakest link so far. Yeah. There's there's not a lot of subplots. So there's not a lot of, there's a lot of non-characters, a lot of people who we don't even know their names other than the rapping girls. I think you just don't learn anybody, who anybody else is, which is good for keeping it not being two and a half hours, but (laughs) we spend so much time with the back and forth and back and forth. And obviously from how confused I was, I didn't understand a lot of this. I did not understand that she'd possessed uh, soon, soon men. I didn't understand that she was possessed at the end. I was like, Oh, I'm glad Bo explained that to me. (laughs) 
Yeah, well, because I had to watch it a bunch of times. So I was like, wait a second, what is happening here? Yeah. And uh, that's the best I've come up with. That certainly fits the evidence. Yes. And we're in that mid-2000s Asian horror vibe thing where it's going to get bad. Like, the movies are going to get a little cheaper and a little less imaginative. But this isn't one of the bad ones. It's just one of the misfires. And, like, I love the, the, the style. When the style kicks in, I think it's really good. I love the shadows and when everything goes red. And the school, of course, the school's creepy. Even if it's a, a new school building, it's still a creepy place. But, yeah, this is just... Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's definitely not fun to take notes on. <laughs> no, no, it is not. Um, Yikes. So, uh, so, th- all right. So that's voice. We have one more in this series that we're going to take a peek at. Yeah. What is that even called? The last uh, one? It is called a blood pledge. Ooh. Um, not the furniture polish. <laughs> um, but kind of the furniture polish. So this is the, uh, it's from 2009 is the last installment uh, in the Whispering Quarter series, and once we conclude that, uh, what what was the the next movie we're doing that you recommended oh, I, to me? And I was like, before we do that, we need to we need finish to- <laughs> Whispering Corridors. <laughs> You're a completist, and I like that. The Shock Labyrinth. That's right, Shimizu's uh, Shock Labyrinth. So, which uh, I had not heard a single good thing about, so I went into it wincing, like, uh. Here we go, and then I enjoyed it. I was like, "What?" Yeah, it gets so. a it gets a bad rap, but yeah, we'll we'll get to it. Um, but yeah, before we do that, kind of chronologically, actually, we will be moving first to a blood pledge, broken promise, uh, also known as Yogo Godem Five Dongban Jaisal. Man, we're doing this. That's right, and we will get to this uh, sooner rather than later uh, because this movie. Um, is a, uh, let's, uh, let's, it's a lean 88 minutes, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah. I don't even care how good it is. It, it's already better <laughs> for being 88 minutes long. I wish shutter just had sort by like length. Oh, I know. I want, I've got 73 minutes to watch a movie. What do you got shutter? <laughs> I was, uh, I was relieved and then saddened by how, uh, short, Tigers are not afraid. Was oh, but because, it's so uh, good. By the end, I was like, I could have used more of that. I mean, I am crying and I'm sobbing, but I also want more. Yeah, yeah. That's that was one of the um, one of the first movies that I can recall in in recent memory. Just blubbering at the end of it, yeah. I was when that when when the magical thing happens in that movie. Man. It was like, oh my God, Issa Lopez, you have you have made my heart grow three sizes this day. I, I think people are going to be talking about that movie for a long time. Yeah, I, in the same way, I think that people talk about something like you know the the Babadook or yeah, you know it follows or like one of those movies that's like, oh, this was one of the high water marks of this period of horror. Yeah. It, it's a tremendous movie. Oh man, that movie. It, there's so much. Like that that whiff of Del Toro, the good Del Toro of like this is the the pants labyrinth and devil's backbone kind of Del Toro with a with a weird slap a weird slap <laughs> uh, a weird dollop how about a dollop of Daisy of yeah. uh, one missed call like Mike's mm, movie yeah. I just I just got that weird vibe but I don't want to elaborate on that without spoiling anything yeah there's that new speaking of that uh, new arrow release of the one miss call trilogy yeah i've heard three is good um, and two is okay th- honestly i think they're all completely uh, they're all good to great nice. um nice. It, it is a real solid series it is um it is more consistent than the ringu series for sure <laughs> that's a good that's a good thing yes <laughs> Boy, when you get to, you know, Ross in, you're just like, well, I don't even know what's happening anymore. This is all nonsense. <laughs> um, but Richard, speaking of nonsense, if people want to hear more out of you before next we return to talk about a blood pledge, colon, broken promise. Yes. Uh, where where can they find you and, and how should they pay tribute? Well, let's establish that they don't after this. Oh, all right. Uh, especially after my... Uh, 
uh, almost suffocating while talking about those stupid bears who wipe their butts. Oh, those adorable shitting bears. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, those were good memories. No, that too. I'm nostalgic <laughs> for a conversation we had 15 minutes ago. Yeah. I have been allowed with my co-hosts, Brad, Jeffrey, and Simon, to invade all up in your feed, that Legion podcast goodness. Hello, this is the Doomed Show. Uh, also, I'm on the old YouTube. Look for the Moviethon vlog, where you can look at this face, as well as hear its uh, cavernous farting. Mm-hmm. That's right. I guess that's what I do. Yes. I've, I've yeah. watched. I've watched the show. <laughs> it is just it is just looking at movies on your shelf and farting it's like is that grease too what <laughs> it, it's grease after a minute yeah <laughs> grease also i like to pull out if you know what i mean no i like to pull out the most ridiculous shit i can find so recently i had uh drive me crazy earth girls are easy and uh, monster dog the one with alice cooper Oh, wow. Yeah, I yeah. like that. It Doesn't that have an alternate title? Isn't it like the Satan something Satan, Dog of Satan, Jaws of Satan, something like that? I don't remember. We did two hours of it, and I don't remember. There's Devil Dog Hound of Hell. and oh, yeah. And then, uh, uh, all right, hang on a second. There is uh, Zoltan. Right. Hound of, is it Zoltan, Hound of Dracula? I want to see that. Um, Devil Dog Hound of Hell. No, this is a different one. Um, one of them has the great Michael Pataki in it, and that, I think that's Sultan. Okay, so this has Devil Dog Hound of Hell is a made-for-TV movie that has no alternate titles, but it does have uh, a Richard Crenna. Oh shit! I know. Yes. Oh my that's, god! Uh, uh, and I'll tell you, if, if to sweeten the pot, R.G. Armstrong. And if you oh. if you are not aware of R.G. Armstrong, uh, he is one of the greatest actors ever i don't know if i know the name you, as oh. soon as, yes holy shit yes him and richard crenna he looks like like the face that uh a company would use to like sell their chewing tobacco <laughs> yes yes and also a vet mimu prune face oh my god um, not a vet mimu no she's not a prune face rg armstrong was prune face. yes absolutely um Man. yeah so that's a that that's one that I recall vaguely from my youth. Um, it, my watch list is growing, and that's not all. <laughs> speaking of the movie The Dark, that that is all up there as well. With uh, Casey Kasem, was he in The Dark? Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh my god! I think that's the one. Seventy nine. Cause, yeah, because he plays like the coroner. It's not like he plays Casey Kasem. It's like, well. I've got a body right here for you. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I, I like the dark and I like the being. Yes, 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 yes. These are all wonderful. The movies. Yeah. Um, I also enjoyed the without warning, which is not a, the movie, but <laughs> more people should watch, uh, without warning. I wholeheartedly concur. Anyway, what were you saying about where people can find you? Uh, hello, doomed show dot dot com. And of course, the uh hello doomed show hello this is the doomed show button on the sexy ass legion podcasts i got some some books look for richard glenn schmidt on amazon you will be disappointed but you can find some tomes i wrote about movies sorry about that and the youtube look for richard schmidt on youtube i'm sure it'll be me and that surfer guy yeah there's a surfer named richard schmidt so that's me <laughs> That's you, the the other guy. Sorry, I, I fell down a, a rabbit hole of looking at the filmography of Richard Jekyll. Um, oh, yeah. I I love Richard Jekyll. He's so cool. He is cool. Um, he fought a grizzly and lost twice. You don't recover. Can't walk away from that. One of my favorite things about the movie Grizzly is that Richard Jekyll gets fucked up by that bear, wakes up in a pit, a bloody mess, climbs out of it just to get killed by the bear man grizzly is so good it is it's truly the perfect film oh my god it lived up to all the expectations that bear gets blown up with a bazooka at the end of it i mean that is <laughs> and it looks so bad it's not even a good it's just pathetic look good from where i'm sitting richard 
looked just <laughs> that's fine. what i mean yeah oh, it's so God. good all right so that's uh that's it for this episode of here or here go show we'll be back to uh talk about more stuff uh i don't know if we're gonna have a regular episode prior to the next um whispering corridors episode but we'll see thanks as always for listening um have a great time and we'll talk to you soon bye everybody say goodbye Richard. Bye.